Harry's Wife, Part 80.1. The harder she tries, the more you see. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. There are certain narcissists, the greater and the ultra, and possibly some upper mid-range, whose facades are so effective that many people have no idea that that individual is a narcissist. Charming, personable, often engaging in kind and philanthropic acts, entertaining, amusing, inviting. Those individuals have a public persona which causes them to be much left, even perhaps national treasures. Of course, there are those stories that lurk, but they're invariably suppressed by the extensive reach and resources of the particular narcissist. There are dark tales that go on behind closed doors, but nobody really ever gets to hear about them, and certainly not the adoring public. The facade is maintained. Nobody is able to see through it. And that is testament to the effectiveness of the facade operated by the ultra, the greater narcissist, and, in some instances, upper mid-range also. As for the other types of narcissists, from lower lesser up to and including middle mid-range type B, those narcissists, well, the lessers have no facade. What you see is what you get, and they simply don't care. They're utterly oblivious. The mid-rangers, lower mid-range, middle mid-range A, middle mid-range B, operate facades, but either with the lower mid-range it's intermittent, flickering on and off like a dodgy strip light, or with the middle mid-range A and B, it's held in place a lot of the time, but there are repeated glimpses, or there are stories of what does go on behind closed door because they're not as effective as keeping it under wraps as the more evolved narcissists. People start to see through it. The gossip becomes more substantial. More people witness certain behaviours. They talk to one another and start to connect the dots. They may not necessarily realise that they're dealing with a narcissist, no, but they do realise that this person isn't quite the pleasant person that they portray themselves to be, that they're not quite the saint that they make out that they are, that they're not the kind and generous person that they portray to the outside world, that there is a dark side to them, something venal and unpleasant that lurks and airs itself every once in a while, or indeed airs itself very regularly to one poor unfortunate, invariably the intimate partner primary source, behind those closed doors. The difficulty that these lower echelon narcissists have within the mid-range where they operate a facade is that invariably, as people start to see, they try all the harder to maintain the facade, but the damage has been done. Sometimes the tiny cracks can be papered over. The narcissist manipulations and a combination of people's unwillingness to see what's really there causes the intermittent complaints of one or two victims to be dismissed as hysteria, reading too much into it, being hypersensitive, or indeed accusing them of being the abuser where an effective smear campaign has taken place. But in other instances, the multiplicity of reports means that those tiny cracks become larger cracks, become fissures, so that then gawping chasms, or gaping chasms even, continue and open up, exposing what is beneath. And that is the situation that Harry's wife finds herself in. As I have explained in parts passim, the tide has turned, the downward spiral has begun. Yes, there will be occasional upward surges as she desperately fights, driven by her unaware narcissism, to maintain the facade and to assert that control. But more and more people are starting to understand and realise that something is rotten in the state of Harry's wife. Of course, the deluded shuggers will continue to bleed from the sidelines. The army of bots will continue to bash those online, trying to shut down certain individuals who speak out about matters. If you wonder 
Why are the sugars so diluted and why can't they see it? Well, I have addressed that in parts passum. And all you need to do is go back to the excellent volume of work in the Harry's Wife series until you start to see some sugar cubes and piles of sugar. And then you'll be able to learn and listen more to why the sugars simply can't see it. Of course, we see a few of them appear in the comments section, don't we, dear listeners? And, of course, one can correct them. And I relish pointing out that they can never spell their heroine's name correctly and that they bleat out the same things. Leave her alone. You don't know her. You're a bully. <sighs> All high on emotional substance, completely lacking in any intellectual, intellectual rigour. Those individuals won't ever see through it. There are, of course, many people in the comments who've said, well, at first I liked her, but then as time has gone on, I've seen more and more, and I've made a judgment that I don't like what I see, and I accept the evidence before me. Those are individuals that go to the evidence and understand it and apply it. Something that I always teach my viewers, readers, and clients. Go to the evidence. Don't be misled by emotional thinking. Don't be misled by speculation. Don't be misled by assumption. Go to the evidence. A little example of that. A very empathic client of mine, who I'd known for some time, once contacted me and explained, HG, I'm being repeatedly hoovered. Now, I know that this particular client isn't prone to exaggeration, isn't a bullshitter, and isn't a nut job. However, her declaration that she was being repeatedly hoovered, in fact, she said it was all the time, merited further investigation. I asked her, were you hoovered today? No. Yesterday? No. The day before that? No. The day before that? No. Any time this week? No. And we went through it day by day, and we ascertained in two or three occasions there were what might have been hoovers, but it couldn't be said for certain that they necessarily came from him. For example, it was a call when nobody spoke, which could either be the narcissist or one of those irritating marketing calls where the computer hasn't connected the phone line to the relevant teleoperator. We ascertained that in a two-month period, he'd actually hoovered just four times. My client wasn't somebody that was prone to exaggeration, but what was happening was her emotional thinking was taking her to places that she'd rather not go. She felt like she was under siege. She felt like she was being repeatedly hoovered. But the evidence... Going to the evidence demonstrated to the contrary, and she wrote to me afterwards saying that not only was that such a useful exercise in the application of logic and discipline, but she also felt a lot better for realising the hoovering was nowhere bad as she first felt. And there lies the distinction between feeling and the application of logic. So ensure you go to the evidence in your dealings. You'll find that you will have a much more coherent and logical response. Talking of evidence, let's go to Newsweek and an article from them which ties in with the fact that the harder she tries, the more you see, explains the following. The article by Jack Royston explains, Prince Harry and Harry's wife discussed more negatively online than in mainstream media. Prince Harry and Harry's wife were discussed more positively by mainstream media than online on both sides of the Atlantic last month, research for Newsweek suggests. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex returned to the limelight with a tour of New York after several months off following the birth of daughter Lilibet Mountbatten Windsor in June. Several months off from what? Hypocrisy? Research by data intelligence agency Signal Labs for Newsweek shows 50% of mentions in British mainstream media outlets were positive compared to 26% among online posts analysed. There was the same proportion of negative references, 33% for each, while a greater share of online content was neutral, 41% compared to 16% for the mainstream media. Harry told Oprah Winfrey in March how the couple left Britain to escape the racism of the tabloid press. 
In America, 44% of mainstream media mentions of Harry and his wife were positive, compared to 28% of online references on social media platforms, blogs, videos, and web forums. Almost half of online posts were neutral, 49% compared to 28% for the mainstream media. US social and online media was more negative, 28% of posts compared to established media references to Harry and his wife, 23% of which were critical. Harry and his wife had their first joint tour since quitting royal duties when they visited New York on September 23rd, the day that saw the greatest volume of references to them at 28,900. The other significant spike in discussion about the couple came with the publication of a Time 100 cover shoot and their inclusion on the most influential people of 2021 list, earning them 13,000 mentions on September 15th. Data intelligence agency Signal Labs picked up 151,030 mentions across the month from all sources spanning news, broadcast, data mining platform LexisNexis, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, blogs, videos, forums, and more. Do you think we were amongst it? Undoubtedly. Last October, Harry's wife told the Teenage Therapy podcast of her struggle with internet trolling that she said was almost unsurvivable. She said... I'm told that in 2019 I was the most trolled person in the entire world, male or female. Now, eight months of that, I wasn't even visible. I somehow doubt that was the case. I was on maternity leave or with a baby, yet you still popped up repeatedly in, in publications. I wonder how, why that was happening. But what was able to be just be manufactured and churned out, it's almost unsurvivable. That's so big. You can't think of what that feels like, because I don't care if you're 15 or 25. It's interesting range span. If people are saying things about you that aren't true, what that does to your mental and emotional health is so damaging. Harry and his wife have struggled with the negativity of both traditional media and social media right from the beginning, with their former press secretary issuing a strongly worded statement around a week after their relationship was first announced. Jason Nauf wrote in a November 8, 2016 statement, his girlfriend, Harry's wife, has been subject to a wave of abuse and harassment. Some of this has been very public, the smear on the front page of a national newspaper, the racial undertones of common pieces, and the outright sexism and racism of social media trolls, trolls rather, and web article comments. Now, of course, out of that, sexist and racist comments are of little value. Indeed, they're of no value. But of course, a negative comment doesn't mean that it's wrong. There are various interesting points that arise out of this. The first is, it demonstrates that the harder Harry's wife tries, the more people are seeing through her. Notice the disparity between the mentions in the mainstream media being more positive and less negative, contrasting with that in social media. Why? It's much harder for Harry's wife to control social media. She can, through the relevant PR agencies, assert a degree of control over certain outlets. So we see it with regard to Hello, People, Tatler, Harper's Bazaar, Town and Country, etc., that generally speak in a positive way. And therefore, those and other publications that are taking the Harry's wife dollar pump out the PR puff pieces, and thus favourable mentions occur there can be that assertion of control. But the lowering amounts of positive responses, the larger amounts of negative responses on social media, demonstrates two things. Firstly, the inability to control that forum with anywhere near as level of efficacy as occurs with mainstream media. Put simply, millions and millions of people can't be bought. Secondly, those individuals look at the evidence, make their own minds up, and express their opinions about what they see. And they don't like what they see. And more and more people are seeing through the facade. Thus, the more that she tries to assert control by spending money, it causes positive, positive mentions in the mainstream media. But then who reads that mainstream media? 
the public, and then they are commenting more and favourably on their own platforms in social media, which demonstrates the PR offensive is losing its lustre. It's also interesting, of course, from the quote that was mentioned about the trolling which has taken place, where Harry's wife talks about if people are saying things about you that aren't true. Now remember, from the narcissist perspective, the question of truth is one which has more elasticity than Chrissy Teigen Tegan's cheeks. Truth is expansive, just like her face. And therefore, the narcissist, of course, will see something that is regarded as a truth by non-narcissists as a lie, and vice versa. Through the narcissistic lens, something that's regarded as a universal truth, which amounts to a threat to control, will be denounced as a lie, an untruth, a smear, and misleading. It has to be done, because it represents a threat. So, for example, you might say to the narcissist, I know that you've been cheating with somebody else. That's a threat to control. The narcissism deploys the first line, the twin lines of narcissistic defence, which is denial. Don't know what you're talking about. That's a lot of nonsense. And the narcissist, being an unaware narcissist, believes what's being said because the narcissism causes that to be the case. There will, of course, be certain things that have been said about Harry's wife which were completely untrue. Many of the racist and sexist nonsense comments. However, there is a growing body of material which evidences much is being stated as true. The hypocrisy, the lies that have been told. See parts passing of this series and of course you don't have to look very far amongst the internet to find both in digital media blogs, other videos on YouTube, where people have called out the behaviours. However, of course, Harry's wife's narcissism will reject all of this, suggesting that what's being said just simply isn't true, that it is the voice of haters, trolls, racists, people who don't understand mental health, people who are envious, etc. When, of course, much of what is being stated is based upon the evidence generated by her own behaviours and actions. But, of course, she is blinded to that by her narcissism. This article demonstrates that no matter how hard she continues to try, more and more people are seeing through the facade, and the facade is crumbling. There will, of course, always be individuals that will be suckered by what she does and will be supportive, and that goes to say for any narcissist. But the problem is that when you seek to assert a facade on an international and global scale, You've got to be fucking good at it for it to remain in place. Prominent political figures, prominent entertainers, prominent business people, they will always have their detractors, because as the saying goes, you can't please all of the people all of the time. However, the vast majority will see them in a particularly good light. Why? Because where they're narcissists, they're very effective at the maintenance of the facade. But someone for Harry's wife, as I've explained previously, has in a sense been over-promoted beyond the talents of her narcissism. The facade is starting to crumble. And accordingly, the harder she tries, the more you see. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.